Chapter 5. The Snargets. Why don't you go out and get some fresh air, Barney dear? Asked Grandmother. Barney stood and looked out of the window. Doesn't look very fresh to me, he grunted. A yellow fog hung over the trees outside. The smoke from the back kitchen chimney stirred itself into it, and there seemed to be a smell of distant cement works. Never mind, dear. It's better than stuffing indoors all day. All right, Granny. I'll go out. After about twenty minutes, he found his jersey mixed up with his bedclothes. One outdoor shoe under the bed and the other one under his chest in the hall. He wandered out into the garden. It was neither warm nor cold and there was no wind at all. He made for the chalk pit, <whistles> whistling with his hands in his pockets. As he came near the edge of the pit, he stopped whistling and stood still. There were voices coming from the bottom of the pit. His pit. Well, perhaps it wasn't his pit. It didn't even belong to Grandfather. Or did it? Perhaps holes in the ground didn't belong to anybody. All the same, he was quite annoyed that other people should be poking around in the pit. He went cautiously to the edge and peeped over. Down there, among the tin cans and the other rubbish, were three boys of about his own age, dressed in jerseys and trousers that were grubbier and more tattered than his own, and grey tennis shoes with holes in the toes. They all had long, rather greasy hair. Harry, sorry, Barney recognised them. They were the Snargut boys, a part of a large family who lived in an old house with tarred weatherboards and were always getting into trouble. At least, that's what the grown-ups said. But then, who didn't get into trouble? The Snargets seemed to be building some sort of shack for themselves out of dead branches and old sheets of corrugated iron, with a lot of horseplay and cries of, No, not that way, clever! Like this, see? Barney crawled to a place where a twisted tree trunk grew from the edge of the cliff and he hid himself behind it, broke off a handy-sized clod of clay and roots from the cliff edge and hurled it at the roof of the shack. It curved through the air towards the target, but missed and landed almost noiselessly on a mossy log. Barney chose himself another clod and threw it. This time it struck the bottom of an upturned pail and exploded like a little bomb, scattering bits of clay over one of the snargets. Here, who's chucking dirt? cried the first Snarget suspiciously. I never, said another Snarget. Must have been him, he added, pointing to the third and youngest. Leave off, will ya? said the first Snarget. Or I'll do ya, see? I never done nothing, protested the youngest Snarget. Oh, ye didn't, did ya? said the first. Nah, I never. Well, don't you do it again, that's all. At the top of the cliff, Barney, the cause of the trouble, chuckled to himself and broke off another clod. This time, his aim was true and the clod landed fair and square on the sheet of iron with a most satisfying clang. Three snarget heads popped out at once, like ferrets out of a rabbit hole. Oh, I told you someone was chucking dirt said the first Snarget, and I told you it wasn't me, said the youngest. They looked round, scowling at the floor of the pit. All right, it's no use idling. We can see ya, called the eldest Snarget. Barney hugged himself in silence behind his tree trunk. He knew this was just a bluff. They hadn't even looked in his direction. It's old Albert, I bet, said the middle-sized Snarget. He's been and followed us. We can see you, Albert, called the first Snarget. Come out of that bush, or we'll come and do ya. 
they were standing, looking at the far end of the pit, with their backs to Barney. With great care, Barney broke off as big a clod as he could find and aimed it again at the roof of the shack. It hit and exploded with another loud clang, scattering pieces over all three snargets, who ducked wildly and clutched at each other, and then looked foolish at being taken by surprise. They whispered fiercely amongst themselves, pointing at places on the cliff edge. 